Spherical harmonics are special mathematical functions defined on the angular coordinates. The azimuthal and polar angles, phi and theta, as shown in the box. Why are spherical harmonics important in quantum mechanics? As we will see, the spherical harmonics make up part of the electron's wave functions in a hydrogen atom. Just like the spatial and time harmonics we have seen earlier are consequences of the spatial and time translation symmetry. The spherical harmonics is a consequence of the rotational symmetry of the hydrogen problem. In this video, we shall review how the spherical harmonic solutions was obtained, and how one can visualize them. Let's begin. Let's start with our Schrödinger equation. The Hamiltonian operator, H, has the kinetic and potential energy terms as shown. The standard prescription is to replace the momentum operator along different dimensions with their real space representation in terms of differential operator, as shown in the gray box below. These operators in the bracket are called the Laplacian in 3D. Thus, we arrived at the form of the Schrödinger equation in 3D as shown in the yellow box. In this video, we are interested with central potential, V, for which V is a function only of the distance from the origin. Thus, the problem is best solved using the spherical coordinates. A spherical coordinate system is a coordinate system for three-dimensional space where the position of a point is specified by three numbers. First, we have the radial R, which is the distance of that point from a fixed origin. Second, we have the polar angle, theta, which measures the angle with respect to the positive z-axis. Third, we have the azimuthal angle, phi, which measures the angle of its orthogonal projection onto the xy plane with the x-axis. The spherical coordinates are related to the Cartesian coordinates via the relations as shown. We can also define their respective spherical unit vectors as shown, represented with a symbol hat. The unit vector r hat is normal to the surface of the sphere, and the unit vectors theta and phi hat are tangent to the surface of the sphere. Theta hat points in the longitude direction, while phi points in the latitude direction. These spherical unit vectors are related to their Cartesian unit vectors via the rotation matrix, R, as shown. Lastly, we would also need the volume element in spherical coordinates in our discussion. The vector differential operator, del, in this spherical coordinate system leads to the following expressions for the gradient, divergence, curl and Laplacian as shown. Since the Schrödinger equation contains the Laplacian, we would need this for our discussion. Okay, back to the Schrödinger equation. We are interested with central potential, v, for which v is a function only of the distance from the origin, given by the radial coordinate, r. We can express our wave function as function of the spherical coordinates, and the Laplacian in the Schrödinger equation is as shown. We shall begin with looking for solution that are separable into products of functions, r and y, where, r, is only a function of r and y is only a function of theta and phi. We shall insert this new separable form of the wave function into the Schrödinger equation. After some manipulation and dividing the equation throughout by the wave function, and multiplying by the constant minus 2 r m square divide by h bar square, we obtain the following as shown. We see that the expressions within the first square bracket depends only on the coordinate r, while the expressions in the second square bracket depends on theta and phi only. Hence, these two expressions must each be a constant for the equality to be satisfied. We shall let the constant be L multiply by L plus 1, for reason that will become apparent later. The first equation is the radial equation, and can only be solved if the potential V is given. We shall discuss this in the next video on hydrogen atom. The second equation is the angular equation, whose solutions give us the spherical harmonics, and is the focus of the remaining of this video. 
This angular equation was first solved by Laplace in connection with the problem of gravitation. Recall we arrived at this equation by imposing angular symmetry. Just like when time and spatial translation symmetry in the Schrödinger equation results in a spatial and time harmonics in the solution, we have an analogous spherical harmonics due to the angular symmetry of the problem. The form of this spherical harmonics, however, is more than just a simple complex exponential which we shall see now. To solve this angular equation, we invoke the separation of variables method, letting the solution y be a product of two functions, p and a. p is only a function of the polar angle theta, and a is only a function of the azimuthal angle phi. Substituting this into the angular equation yields us a new angular equation, with the terms on the left-hand side being only a function of theta, and the terms on the right-hand side only a function of phi. Thus, for this equation to hold true, the left-hand side and right-hand side must each be a constant. Here, we let that separation constant be m square. We then arrived at two equations, one for the azimuthal part that depends on phi, and one for the polar part that depends on theta. The azimuthal equation is easy to solve. Its solution, a of phi, are simply the complex exponentials. It is a natural requirement that the function remains unchanged when the angle phi advances by 2 pi. Thus, this implies that m has to be an integer, which can either be positive or negative as shown, including 0. The polar solutions, on the other hand, is more involved. We shall not attempt to mathematically derive it, but will simply just state the solution. The solution, p theta, is given by the associated Legendre function, which are polynomial functions defined here in terms of the Legendre polynomial according to the Rodriguez formula. For the Rodriguez formula to make any sense, L has to be integer and a non-negative number, and that M only runs from minus L to plus L. The associated Legendre function for a given M and L index can be easily found on Wikipedia. Now, it's time to piece together all the solutions. The solution to the Schrödinger equation for an angular symmetric potential is given by the wave function phi, which can be written as product of the radial part, r, and the angular part, y. The function y is what we called spherical harmonics, indexed by the integers m and l. It is given by the product of the complex exponential and of the associated Legendre function. What is left now is to determine an appropriate constant, c, so that the function y is normalized. We write the normalization condition, using the volume element expressed in terms of spherical coordinates. It is convenient to normalize the function r and y separately as shown. The normalization requirement then allows us to arrive at the final mathematical expression of the wave function. We show here the explicit expressions of the spherical harmonics function y for l equals to 0, 1 and 2. As we shall see later when we solved for the hydrogen atom, these are the L states that are most relevant. For each index L, we access only M from minus L to plus L. Thus, for L equals to 0, we have only M equals to 0. For L equals to 1, we have M of minus 1, 0 and plus 1. For L equals to 2, we have M equals to minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1 and 2. Thus, 1 spherical harmonics for L equals 0, 3 spherical harmonics for L equals 1, and 5 spherical harmonics for L equals 2. We see that these spherical harmonics are complex functions due to the complex exponential functions. In order to facilitate the plotting of these spherical harmonics, we shall introduce the real spherical harmonics. These real spherical harmonics can be obtained by taking pairwise combination of the complex spherical harmonics of index m and minus m. This is possible because of Euler identity, which allows us to take linear combination of the complex exponentials to produce sine and cosine. Next, we shall visualize these real spherical harmonics. For L equals 0, we have only one spherical harmonics as shown. 
it is a constant. Thus, the function y00, when plotted as function of theta and phi, traced out the surface of a sphere. Often, this spherical harmonics is called the s orbital. For l equals to 1, we have three spherical harmonics, m equals minus 1, 0 and plus 1. The absolute values of the y functions, when plotted as function of theta and phi, traced out a 3D surface which reveal a double lobe shapes as shown. The signs of the y function is denoted by the two colors. For m equals minus 1, 0 and plus 1, the lobes are pointing along x, z and y respectively. Hence, these spherical harmonics are often denoted as the px, pz, and py orbitals. The color denote the sign of the y function. For L equals to 2, we have 5 spherical harmonics. In this case, the shapes are more complicated. Let's look at the M equals minus 2 and plus 2 cases. These shapes consist of 4 lobes, lying on the XY plane. For M equals minus 1 and plus 1, these 4 lobes lie on the XZ and YZ plane respectively. These spherical harmonics are often denoted as the D orbitals. This concludes our discussion of spherical harmonics, which we will use in our next video on the solution to the hydrogen atom. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.